Hey guys, I bought another small form factor machine. This is the Dell Optiplex 9020 from the Haswell generation. Quite cheap these days, only 60 US or 90 Australian dollars. Now for modern AAA gaming, these machines are really not cutting it anymore. You might be able to upgrade to an i7 with four cores and eight threads, 32 gigs of RAM, but with the video card you will run into uh, issues in terms of the case and also the power supply. But on this channel, what we do is we take old computers and play some classic games and especially for Windows XP or retro gaming, this machine is outstanding. The Haswell generation is the final generation from the Intel uh, computers that still support Windows XP. Here we have the machine. It is the Dell Optiplex 9020 and this unit came with an Intel Core i5-4570, 8 gigabytes of RAM, but no storage. At the front we have USB 2 ports and USB 3 ports. Microphone, headphone goes here. This is the power button and we get an optical drive. This can come in quite handy for Windows XP or retro gaming because many games come on discs and have some sort of copy protection integrated. And here we have all the ports at the back, two PS2, two display ports. We have VGA output, so this has integrated Intel graphics serial port. We have more USB ports, four USB 2, another two USB 3, gigabit ethernet, we've got line in the blue one and line out the green one. I've upgraded the video card, which we will take a closer look later in the video. And here goes the power cord. Let's open the machine and take a look at the inside. There's a latch here, pull it up and off goes the cover. Next, we remove the front part here. There are three latches here. Just gently lift them up and then you can remove the front. Here we have all the main components, storage and memory underneath. Here goes the graphics card and this is the processor. Now my machine didn't come with storage to remove the optical drive. Just lift this up a little bit and pull it back and then you can disconnect the SATA data cable and power cable and remove it. To get this drive cage out, also we're gonna remove the SATA data cable as well as the SATA power cable and then just flick this to the uh, left and then the drive cage comes out just like this. So this is the drive cage and just to visualize the optical drive goes here at the top. To remove it, just pull it back and off it goes and just push these two inside and pull it out and this is the mount for a three and a half inch drive. Now you can get a two and a half inch to three and a half inch adapter from Dell but I just used one of my own. This is what it looks like. We have a two and a half inch SSD here inside and on the outside a three and a half inch frame and I've got here such uh, a unit still sealed. I will try to find uh, a affiliate link for this product because they can come in quite handy and usually these are cheaper to get compared to the Dell proprietary part. Alternatively, if you do not need the optical disc drive, you can buy one of these. So this basically replaces the optical disc drive and then you install your two and a half inch SATA drive inside here and use that for storage. That's also quite nifty and keeps everything neat and clean. When I opened the machine, I got a surprise. It came with eight gigabytes of RAM, but they installed four memory modules with two gigabytes each. And for Windows XP Retro Gaming, this actually made life easy. I removed two modules and now we have four gigabytes of RAM in dual channel configuration. You can see here the RAM slots are numbered. Make sure you install the modules into the white sockets labeled one and two. The SATA ports are also numbered. The blue one is SATA zero. This is where your main boot device should connect to. And the black one is SATA one and the white one is SATA two. So here SATA one has the optical disk drive and SATA zero is the SSD. Here we have the CPU cooler. If you want to, you can check the thermal paste and reapply it. I didn't bother uh, the temperatures turned out to be perfectly fine. And for the next part, I will remove the graphics card. So I've already upgraded it. So let me just pull it out and then we'll have a closer look 
at the GPU. Every small form factor machine has a different configuration. Here we're only getting two PCI Express slots, 16X and 4X. And if you uh, look carefully, you probably have noticed you can only install single slot video cards into this machine. So if you wanna install like a GDX 750 Ti, that's a dual slot card, uh, it won't fit in this machine. So you need to pick a different one. But for Windows XP Retro Gaming, uh, you don't need uh, a dual slot video card. Uh, you get away with a lot of options that are single slot. And here we have the video card. It is a InnoVision 3D, a NVIDIA GeForce GT 630. We get 96 cores running at 810 megahertz, one gigabyte of DDR3 memory connected with a 128-bit memory interface and running at 667 megahertz. It's a single slot card. The fan is actually quite audible. So uh, there are different cards you can pick that are not as noisy as this one. We're getting outputs DVI. You can use a DVI to VGA dongle if you wanna connect a CRT monitor and we're also getting HDMI. I checked out a Guru 3D review of the GT630 and they used NVIDIA Forceware 301.42. I had a look on my NAS, on my driver archive, and I found that exact driver. It's a WHQL driver release, so that's what we're going with in this video. If it has a BIOS, we will flash it on the Dell website. You can get all the downloads. It came with BIOS version A08, and we're flashing it to the latest version A25. Now, just a few words on audio. One of the highlights of using a Windows XP retro gaming PC is that you can use a Sound Blaster X5 and get terrific EAX audio, especially if you're playing with headphones, you get some really nice 3D surround sound. The problem is with small form factor machines, you need a low profile card and there are not too many around. This is an example but it is for PCI and this computer does not have a PCI slot. So I would recommend that if you're picking one of these small form factor machines for Windows XP or retro gaming, do check that it has a PCI slot. You will also have to find a low profile bracket and that can be really hard to find, but maybe there's one available for 3D printing. The integrated audio has some basic support for EAX. I will put a few screenshots on the video where you can see some of the games detecting EAX, but it's not on the level of what a Creative Labs Sound Blaster X5 can do. I loaded the BIOS defaults, otherwise I didn't change too much. We're using a couple of projects for this video. The first one is called Win Setup from USB. This lets you install Windows XP from a USB thumb drive, including the SATA AHCI drivers. Just make sure in the BIOS, the uh, controller is set to RAID. The Snappy Driver Installer Origin project is next. That's a fantastic project. It identifies all the components of the machine and then you can uh, let it automatically install all of them. I do unselect the graphics driver because we will later install that manually. And here we're installing the NVIDIA GeForce drivers. This is version 301.42. Here's the desktop. Everything is nice and sharp. So let's run some tests. In 3D Mark 2001 SE, we're getting 39,896. In 3D Mark 03, 19,853. And in 3D Mark 05, we're getting 15,462. Let's benchmark a few games that have integrated benchmarks. This is Doom 3. We're testing everything today at 1280 by 1024 and Doom 3 runs at 119.8 FPS. Half-Life 2 Lost Coast, all the details have been maxed out, 132.8 FPS. This is Far Cry with ultra details, 132.47 FPS and this is Fear. Also, we have maxed out all the details, but we are not using soft shadows and we're not using anti-aliasing and we're getting a minimum FPS of 43, average of 93 and a maximum of 195. And now let's have a look at some games. Now I'm a GOG affiliate, so I like using games from GOG because I can just 
install them from a USB hard drive. I don't need internet connection. I don't need CD keys. I don't need DRM drama. You just run the installer and play your classic games. We have Painkiller Black Edition from 2005 running silky smooth. And here we have Painkiller Overdose from 2007 also running silky smooth. Both, well, all games today running at 1280 by 1024. Tomb Raider Anniversary, Silky Smooth, 1280 by 1024, a really beautiful game. Tomb Raider Legend also runs pretty well, but here I did notice a few dips below 60, so it's not 100% perfect, but it runs pretty good most of the time. Unreal 2 is an older classic, again 1280 by 1024, Silky Smooth, and this game is heaps of fun. Flat Out 2 is a classic racing game. Now this seems to be locked at 60 FPS. I'm not sure if it activates V-Sync or if that's just how the game is configured, but it holds that frame rate without any dramas. Desert Thunder is a game I haven't tried before from 2003. So this is an older title. And again, at 1280 by 1024, runs great, plays great, looks great. A quite fun game. Hitman 2 Silent Assassin from 2002 also runs perfect. All the details are maxed out and I believe this game also has some sort of a 60 FPS cap in the engine. Hitman Contracts, now this game surprised me a little bit. It is from 2004 and I noticed that it doesn't hold the 60 FPS all of the time. And uh, yeah, it's very likely the graphics card. That's a little bit surprising. Such a demanding game for uh, a game released in 2004. Let's try a flight simulator. This is IL-2 Stormovic 1946. Hopefully I pronounced it uh, not too bad. And I had to use the OpenGL render. I got some errors with the DirectX option. And yeah, the game seems to work fine. So yeah, you can run some classic flight sims on this machine as well. Not a bad computer, but does it run Crisis? Here we have the GPU benchmark of Crisis running at 1280 by 1024. And well, it runs the game, but not that well. We're getting around 22 FPS on average. So I would say at least with all the details maxed out, no, this machine does not have enough performance to run Crisis. So guys, I really like these small form factor machines. Uh, they're especially useful for beginners or if you don't have the time to build something custom and the value is just terrific. For 60 US dollars, you get the entire computer. Fair enough, I did have to upgrade the storage, but storage is, is, is really cheap. You can even get away with a mechanical SATA hard drive. You will definitely need to get a low profile video card, either from Nvidia or AMD. There are lots of options. I've done videos in the past, I will put some resources on the screen and in the video description. For the monitor, you can go with a 17 or 19 inch 1280 by 1024 monitor. These are usually 17 inch and uh, 19 inch and they still are available uh, brand new with fairly decent panels. If you want to use a widescreen monitor, you can do that. Do check the documentation that it supports display scaling. So you have the, the native 4x3 or 5x4 aspect ratio and 1280x1024 or 1280x960 is, is a recommended resolution. Um, it's not too demanding, but really nice, clear and sharp and it will look beautiful on either uh, a 5x4 or 4x3 monitor as well as a 16x9 monitor with the letterboxing all around the screen. In terms of performance, these are outstanding for Windows XP. Even with single slot video cards, you have lots of options. If the GT630 is not enough, you can get a 730 or one of the Radeon uh, cards. There is plenty for you to choose from. And RAM, you only need four gigs of RAM. Storage is also pretty cheap. And in terms of processor, even uh, Core i3 or Pentium or Celeron will have enough performance for those classic games. What else can you do with such a machine? emulation of course. Recently I've been playing some older games, for example uh, Flight of the Amazon Queen, I finished that under DOSBox and I've also been playing some PlayStation 1 games, Resident Evil 1 and Resident Evil 2 and such a machine has enough performance to run these emulators 
including shaders for those scan lines and CAT effects. So that's a lot for you to play. There you go, this was the video on the Dell OptiPlex 9020, one of many small form factor machines that you can grab for cheap and have a lot of fun. And these old games are fun, I, I really love them, I think they're better than a lot of the modern games that are out there. The games are patched, you know, you get all the DLCs, they're well documented and they're just heap of fun and there's so many out there. I do recommend that you pick one game at a time. Don't install 500 games, then you might get overwhelmed and actually play less than you want. If you find the topic of small form factor machines interesting, I will put some resources on the screen for you to check out. And as always, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Check the notifications, you get all the updates, give it a like, and I shall see you soon with another one.